Neville Goddard. Fulfillment of God's Plan I think you're all aware that this is the most dramatic week in Christendom and yet I dare say that not an nth part of 1% of those who call themselves Christians really understand what it is all about. It's the story of the fulfillment of God's purpose. That's the week, the triumphant march into Jerusalem, the crucifixion and then the resurrection. And it's told as though it took place on earth. That's how the story is told. For as Tennyson said, truth embodied in a tale shall enter in at lowly doors. So, man cannot think abstractly so it's told in the form of a story. And man has mistaken the story for the reality. Let us now look to see who the one is spoken of in scripture. They say his name is Jesus. You may not believe me but I'll tell you who Jesus is. Say, I am, that's Jesus. Don't say, I am man or John or Peter or anything, just I am. That's Jesus. That's God. That's the Lord God Jehovah. The crucifixion is already over. It was in the beginning of time, a deliberate act on the part of God, all over. The resurrection took place and is taking place and will continue until everyone is awake. So, you say, I am, that's Jesus. Now, it begins with the march. Mark tells us that he took the twelve and then he walked ahead of them. The way Mark states it, it is as if he were one whom a dream had possessed and who went forward to fulfill all that the prophets had foretold. For he said, I have come to fulfill scripture. The only purpose. Now, not a man on the outside fulfilling scripture. This one, which is God, is buried in you when you say, I am. You may not be aware of it aside from dreaming the dream of life which is this. He also is dreaming the fulfillment of his purpose. And the day will come, you are going to reproduce within yourself all that is said in scripture concerning Jesus. Then you will know who Jesus is. It is said that he told them, we're going up to Jerusalem, and all that was written of the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. And the evangelist adds, they understood none of these things. This saying was hid from them and they did not grasp what was said. Only the risen Lord can interpret scripture. Only his finger could trace the ambiguous phrases of scripture and extract their heavenly meaning. It's a pattern in scripture. That only when he rises in you as you, can you take the Old Testament and simply follow the pattern. You know what the pattern is because you've experienced it. And the whole thing unfolds and the whole thing is told you in the Old Testament. But it's a pattern. It's told you as though it's history, ancient history. It's divine history and that history, not page after page, but a pattern goes through the entire thing and then that pattern unfolds within you. And when it unfolds within you, you actually gain that certainty that, I am he. There is no other way you'll ever know it until it unfolds within you. Now, God came and comes into human history. And now we're going to give him a name, in the person of Jesus, but the Jesus in you, in me, in every child born of woman. That's the only Jesus in eternity. I am that Jesus. Well, now he's a father. When God is born within you, for that's the beginning of it all, you first awaken within you and you do not know you are God. You only know that you have awakened from the most profound sleep ever and it seemed like eternity. You did not awake on the bed where you fell asleep the night before. You awoke in a tomb and the tomb is your skull. And you awake within your skull and you're all alone with no one present. But you have a built-in innate knowledge what to do. And you do it and you come out of your skull as a child comes out of the womb of woman. But you're coming out of your own skull and you pull yourself out of your own skull. And the imagery of scripture concerning the birth of God surrounds you, including the little babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and three witnesses to the event. So, you're told, when they came, they saw the heavenly being but him they did not see. It's the birth of God. God actually took upon himself the limit of contraction, which is man. Now he is born, the birth being an expansion. There is no limit to expansion. God is forever expanding and then, at a moment of expansion, he then has a new venture of contraction. Then he expands beyond what he was. Then he contracts. 
then he expands beyond what he was and that is God's play. There is no limit to expansion. He puts a limit to contraction. The limit is man. So, when you break the tomb, you come out and you are God. Therefore, no one can see you. The heavenly hosts who were present to witness the event can't see you, for you are spirit, you are God. But you see them and you see the babe and you see everything round about you just as described in Luke and Matthew. But you do not know that you are God. That comes later, and you'll not in eternity know you are God until God's Son calls you Father. And God's Son, the Christ of Scripture, is not Jesus. It's David. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord God Jehovah in you when you say, I am. That's Jesus. That's not David. Who then is Christ? The Son of God. David then comes and when David comes, there is no uncertainty as to who you are. For he calls you Father. And before he utters the word Father, you know you are his Father. And he knows he is your Son. And this relationship is now what every heart is aching for. When this is established by an actual experience, the drama is over. Everything is over that you came to perform, to find the Son who, in turn, will reveal you as God the Father. For he is sound asleep in humanity and man doesn't know that he is God. And when he is born from above, he still doesn't know he is God. And not in eternity can he find out who he is until the Son appears. So, we are told in scripture, no one knows who the Son is except the Father and no one knows who the Father is except the Son and anyone to whom he chooses to reveal him. So, hey do it because they know neither my Father nor me. Had they known my Father, they would have known me also. But they know neither my Father nor me. So, you find, you've got to actually feel between the words. For he's speaking one moment as Father and then speaking, in another moment as Son. It's a mystery and how are you going to tell it unless you tell it in the form of a story that it may enter in at lowly doors. But man, hearing the story, learns to feel behind the story and feel what it's trying to convey. But when you actually experience the story, then you know the mystery. It's the mystery that everyone one day will unfold within himself and he'll know that he is God. So this is what confronts man this week as it's dramatized but not told. For they do not know it. They do not know the story. Let me turn now to the 55th chapter of Isaiah. I will make a covenant with you. Now he's speaking to all of us, I will make a covenant with you, and this is his covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David, I have made him a witness to the peoples. That is my witness to the peoples. Now what is he going to witness? The truth of God's word. So God's word is scripture and the scripture spoken of was the Old Testament, and the word is truth, I make him now a witness to the people and he has my steadfast and sure love forever. Now, that is my covenant with you, said the Lord to us. We turn now to the trial, and here we find one called Jesus standing before Pilate, and he turns to Pilate and he said, For this I was born. And for this I came into the world to bear witness to the truth. Now he tells you he is not of this world, unless you are born from above, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He's not speaking of the birth from the womb of a woman in spite of all the priesthoods of the world. He is speaking of an entirely different birth, born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. He said, I am from above, you are from below. Now, he's not speaking to you, the being who is God. He is speaking to this body here. This is from below. This came out of the womb of my mother. But there is that in me which is I am that no woman can bear. That must be born from above. It is now entombed in my skull, entombed in your skull. But the skull of which I speak is a divine skull containing all of us. That is the skull. And it is said in the 87th Psalm, and this one was born here and that one was born there all within the one grand skull and it's called Zion, another name for Jerusalem. So, when Paul said, the Jerusalem from above is our mother and she bears children into liberty. The Jerusalem from below bears them into slavery. Well, my physical mother bearing her ten children that she raised, she wove garments of flesh, 